And welcome once again to another edition of Footnotes. Pastor Mark joined with Pastor Brady and Pastor Brandon. So maybe I should call myself Pastor Bark because you're both bees, Brady and Brandon and Bark. We are excited to be with you today on the podcast. We always have a good time together, and I just think that highlights the great environment we have here working together. We enjoy one another. So thankful for that. As we begin today, uh, we've got a really good topic that we want to talk to you about. It's something that we're going to roll out in 2023 that we believe will benefit the church body in a tremendous way. And we want to go ahead and tell you about it on the podcast so that you can be thinking ahead, praying, and getting excited about it. But before we get into that, let me just say we're so encouraged by all the people who let us know that they're listening to the podcast. In fact, there's probably not a week that goes by, guys, where somebody tells us, I listen to your podcast, which is amazing to me. And uh, they tell us what a benefit it is and what a blessing it is. In fact, one of our church members was telling us he listens to it every day going to work and then listens to the second half every day coming home from work. And I won't mention who that is, but Brett, we're really thankful that you're out there and that you're listening. And we've, of course, heard from many other people. So any thoughts on that really quick, guys, just about the response? We just want to note, thank you for listening. And uh, also, people have given us some really good ideas People come up and say, have you ever thought about doing a podcast on this subject? So some of our best subjects, whether it was prayer or whether it was uh, attendance or whether it was any other item, people told us we would like to hear you guys talk about this issue. So it's really neat, isn't it? Yeah, it's awesome. And we pray that 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 continues. Um, And actually, if you do have... A suggestion for the podcast, uh, we would love for you to reach out at footnotes at broadwaychurch.org, and that'd be a great way to drop in your suggestions, and we'll look at that and, and talk through that next time. Wow, who knew? So we have an email address for our podcast. All right, and I guess you get it, Brandon. Yeah, well, all of the pastors will, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I look forward to that. All the hate it's mail. exciting. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. It'll be great. Uh, so good. Yeah, that's great. If you have a suggestion, we love suggestions, and some of the best shows have been listener-suggested. Right. Uh, in fact, uh, somebody said, do one on Can You Lose Your Salvation? So if you have a good thought and you say, hey, I'd love to hear what you guys say, Brandon gave you the directions, check it out, let us know. All right, so today we're going to be talking about our new initiative for 2023 called A2F, A-B-C-D-E-F. Now, what we want to do on the podcast is we want to just make our listeners aware of this new initiative. We want to talk about, number one, what it is, number two, why we feel like we should do this, And number three, when we plan to roll this out and what it's going to look like. So A to F is our 2023 initiative that we have been talking through, planning, preparing for. And guys, how long would you say we've been working through this? It's been months. I'd say almost I'd say almost years. I feel like even when we first came on, Jake and I back at our pastor's retreat back almost a year ago, we probably started even kind of talking about processes and where we want the church to be in the future. So I'd say almost back then, but in recent months, I'd say it's been months more recently that we've talked about the details of it, the specifics, but... Yeah. Okay. So this isn't just something we thought up instantly. It's not something we read in the book of the month club and said, hey, let's do that. Um, It's really something we've been praying through and thinking over A to F. So we're excited to share it with you and we hope that it'll benefit the church. So number one, let's go ahead and answer this question. What is A to F? What does that mean? Why are we calling it A to F? And what are we going to do with this thing? So anybody want to jump in and tackle that one? Uh, I can if I can remember all the acronyms, but uh, yeah, so it's an acronym, right? Each letter stands for something else. So A is attending, right? The first step we expect and uh, we hope people will attend church, right? If you're not here, you can't 
go along the rest of the, uh, the the path. So A is for attending, B is for beginning at Broadway, our membership class. And so that's kind of the next stage of, of being a part of our church is go through that class, learn about who we are. Uh, C is for covenant, and that's where you join the covenant community, you join our church. Uh, it also kind of is with connect groups, which is kind of our Sunday school classes where you get to know people, you connect, you make friends, you build relationships with each other. The D is for discipleship groups, which that's where you have a you know another Christian come alongside you and kind of disciple you, help you learn what it means to be a Christian, go deeper in your faith. Then E is for equipping groups, which is what we'll uh, hopefully do in, on Wednesday nights. We're kind of equipping you with a certain skill set or a, uh, a fruit of the Spirit that God has given you, whether it's biblical counseling or sharing your faith in evangelism or you know, family leading your family and family worship at home, just different skill sets so you actually can be equipped to do the work of the ministry. And then F is the final kind of the end goal, which is that you would be fruitful, right? That you'd bear fruit, that you would uh, give, that you would serve, that you would um, disciple others, that you would help other people along this process from A to F. So it's not just about you, but have, having other people join you on that journey from A to F to fruitfulness. Yeah. And when we were thinking up the acronym, we, uh, we kind of noticed just naturally it started like a b c and we were like hey yeah. that that's it that's what we can call it <laughs> a to f yep. i mean we wanted a to z but we thought 26 <laughs> yeah, steps would be overwhelming <laughs> and so we were like well you know what six even steps yeah. is pretty simple and so as we just started thinking through and brady you said something that's key to what this is i mean it is an acronym and each letter does stand for something but it's really a process yeah it's really a process. And so what we've noticed as pastors is that from the time people come into the door of the church, they are somewhere on that spectrum. Everyone is not in the same place. So some people that come through the doors of the church, they've been members here forever. And they're a little bit further along that spectrum. And then others are just attending. They're brand new. And so what we want to do is communicate that we have have prayerfully thought through a system to help you become a fruitful, faithful disciple of the Lord and member of Broadway Church. I kind of equate it to, um, and I've been using this analogy internally, but like a directory in a mall. Like you walk up to a directory in a mall and you see all of the shops and all the areas that you could go, uh, but then you see this little star that says, you are here. Um, And for us, when we're looking at this process uh, pastorally, looking through the eyes of member, you know, every single member in the church is on that scale somewhere. They're on that map from A to F, whether they're attending, whether they're going through the membership class beginning at Broadway, or whether they're, they've are they joined the church, you know, they're, they are somewhere on that map. And so we're just trying to show you, like, this is where you need to be going, just like that directory. Yeah, the, you are here. Because we see people in the church either visiting, a, you know, joining, or already here, And the question becomes, okay, how do we make them, how do we help them, we don't make, but how do we help them become true disciples of Jesus Christ? So this idea is not new with us. I would would go back to two examples in the past. So first of all, back in the 90s when Rick Warren wrote Purpose Driven Church, He talked about how at Saddleback Community Church there in California, they had a process that their members were exposed to, and he used the baseball diamond. And so that was his analogy. And he said, you know, you start off at home plate and then you go to to first base and that's, you know, the membership class. And then you go to second base and that's a covenant member. And then you go to third base and that's you know, being a a discipled member, and then the goal is to help people when you come back to the home plate, you know, and so he used that baseball diamond, and uh, that was a good analogy because it helped me as a young pastor go, yeah, there's a process, right, and everybody's not at the same place. I think one of the big mistakes pastors make so often when they look at their church is they assume everybody should be at the same step. And so they teach that way, they preach that way, they think that way, and 
and and I don't know if this is fair, but I know I've done this in my life and ministry. Because you kind of think singularly, you know, everybody should be at the fruitful stage. You kind of start, you know, browbeating people who are not at the fruitful stage. Right. And you don't really offer any steps for them because you, you just want everybody at the final solution, you know, and and not everybody's there. I mean, not everybody. Pe- people come to our church. We've got people that have visited for two years and they're not members so how do we view those people well they're a you're at letter a that's where you are if you're comfortable there i mean we can't force you we can't you know that's between you and the lord we're gonna but but we want you to know this is where we see you on the spectrum we're not valuing you like lower or higher we're just saying this is really where you are in the church and we want to try to help you because we don't think it's good for you to just stay at letter a we think there's better things for you. Another book that really helped me see the significance of this was Tom Rainer's book, Simple Church. And uh, I've got the copy of it right here on the table as we're doing it. And one of the things Rainer says in Simple Church is that your goal as a church is to be so simple that your members could look at any visitor And if the visitor said, how do I become a fully trained disciple at this church? The member should be able to tell them the simple process. Now, if somebody were to ask that question of us, and this is what I've posed to you guys over the last year in our retreats and our meetings, if somebody asked us, what does it mean to be a faithful member at Broadway? What would our answer be? And I think the pastors, along with the majority of the, the, the membership, would innocently just say, well, you know, being faithful means you come Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday. It means you give tithingly, and it means you serve in some capacity. So if you do those, those three things, if you come, if you give, and if you do some kind of service, then you are a fully mature member in Christ. I think if you went to the majority of churches that are out there today and you were to say, what does a faithful disciple look like? I think a lot of them would would kind of echo that, right? In some way or the other. Does that sound fair? That's kind of the way we all just think. Yeah, what is a what is a fully mature member at this church? And so Rayner says, well what you want to do is you want to show them what that looks like, but you want to make it simple. And so the simple part for us is the A to F. It's very clear. It's very simple. It just puts it out there and says, what does a mature disciple of Jesus look like at Broadway? And the answer would be, you've walked from A to F, and now you're leading other people to do that. That's what a mature disciple would be at Broadway. So we hope our people can articulate that, and they will know that. And then when people come in the door, the people will know that. I don't know. Thoughts? Yeah, I think it just brings clarity. Um, where you know, where are you on this the spectrum? And then what's next? It's kind of like what's the next step for you? Where no matter where you are on that chart, is it? Oh, I need to go to beginning at Broadway and you know find out what this church is about, or I need to finally join. I need to you know take that next step, or maybe I've joined and I've been here for decades, but you know I'm not really. I've never been discipled. You know, who can disciple me or? Or may have been discipled, but I'm not really serving in any capacity. So it kind of helps people, no matter where you are, what's next? What's the next step? How can you continue to follow the Lord in maybe a new way that you haven't considered yet, that you haven't stepped out in faith yet? And so I think this brings really clarity to everyone, you know, what should we be doing? Where What's what's the next? So, And I would yeah. also say, like, uh, to piggyback off that point of clarity, um, it also reinforces the idea uh, that, Pastor Mark, you've been kind of leading the congregation in that everything that we do at Broadway is intentional. Like there is intentionality with every single ministry, uh, class, whatever it is, we are intentional about what we're doing. And this kind of helps uh, for those who are um, more structurally minded, who enjoy uh, diagrams and things like that. This kind of shows the church where those things fit in into the grander vision of the church, like where we're heading as a church. It puts all of those pieces like Sunday school and and uh, men's and women's ministries and all of those things, it puts them 
uh, kind of in their proper place as we grow along in this path. Yeah, I think that's so well said and so good. It brings clarity. It helps you see where you are. So what is A to F? It's a process. It's an, an acronym. It's a it's something we're rolling out to try to help our people know where they are on the spectrum of walking toward Christ-likeness, yeah. being a faithful member of the church. And we want to be able to communicate that. Let's go to number two. Let's talk about why this is important. And I think, for me, this is going to be the longer, the longer segment here. We've talked about what it is, but let's talk about why. Why? Why would we feel the need to think so strategically to do this? What, what do you guys think? Well, uh, personally, I think it goes back to our, um, well, at least for me, and I'm sure for you guys, it goes back to our pastoral responsibility over the church. It is our job, uh, given by the Lord, to effectively equip the saints for the work of the ministry. And for us, this process uh, fits in line with where we are going as far as being a healthy, Christ-centered, Word-exalting church. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I feel like this really fits into that, but it also propels us uh, toward that vision of being a healthy church. And I know we've talked about the nine marks a lot, um, but that, I mean, that's who we want to be. That's who we want to, uh, again, to exhibit is uh, Christ's likeness, like you just said, but also um, using our spiritual gifts and doing all of the things that the Word of God tells us to do. And we feel like this process helps us pastorally um, uh, help our people get to that place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think a lot of churches they do a good job of A, B, and C. Yeah, People attend, people maybe join the church or go through a, a beginning at Broadway type class, and then people covenant. Okay, I'm going to be part of the community. I'm going to go to Sunday school. I'm going to be a member. You know, okay, A, B, C. But honestly, I think that's where most churches stop. Now, I'm not saying all churches. I'm just saying the ones I've always been involved with in my life I don't think that it was intentional. I just don't think anybody thought about it. We did ABC really well. D, E, and F, not so well. So there wasn't a lot of intentional discipleship. You know, when I was young in the faith and in church, discipleship was not really talked about a lot. That became really popular in the 2000s. I'm not saying it wasn't there. It's just the churches I attended the the whole idea was you just need to come and you need to sit and listen and you need to give and, and you know, do something, you know, be an usher, be a greeter, but do something. And that's what you do. And like, I don't ever remember like men getting together at a coffee shop saying, hey, we just want to disciple one another. We want to hold one another accountable. You know, I don't ever remember that. I don't ever remember. Now, I do remember like taking evangelism classes, and I think that was equipping. But those were kind of extra. Those were the special people, you know, on Tuesday night. And you had to come to that extra. And so if you were really committed, you we did EE, and that was like your equipping. But, you know, I don't know. There, it just seemed like A, B, and C churches did well. D, E, and F was like, yeah, I don't really know. And I would even say, I think when we look at our membership, and this is not being critical, because again, I think this is just the way all of us grew up. I think our church is very strong on A, B, and C. I I think we're learning D, E, and F right now. And we're seeing that in women's ministry and men's ministry. And we're seeing it in a multiplicity of other things cropping up. So we're learning the last six And so that's also good for us to clarify, because like you said, we're trying to become healthy. How do we do that? A through F. What were you going to say, Brandon? I was just going to say, I think in the past, um, people, uh, even growing up when I was a kid, I remember going to these, uh, basically it was the Sunday evening service called like Discipleship Union or Disciple Union or Training Union where almost it felt like um, maybe the terminology discipleship was kind of misused. Like they, um, it wasn't 
exactly what discipleship is, which is like you said, holding one another accountable. And we feel like, you know, that really happens a lot in those small groups where you're able to really know the men, in our case, uh, well enough to be able to speak the truth of God's word in their life without them just saying, who are you? You know, you don't know me. Why are you able to speak that word? But um, but when you're in those discipleship, those true discipleship uh, in a biblical sense uh, type groups, uh, you're able to hold one another accountable because you have the authority because you've spent time, uh, tons of time, uh, going through the Word together, praying together, uh, rejoicing with them in their triumphs and weeping with them in their times of need. Um, you, you have real yeah. depth and community. Real depth. Yeah. And I, I would even say this. You mentioned the Baptist training unions. Yeah. I remember those <laughs> on Sunday night. It, the, kind of the idea was if you come on Sunday night, we'll have a second Sunday school class for you. <laughs> and it, it, you're being discipled. But they and viewed it, it as discipleship. They did. And it was, but yeah. it was just information. Right. It was like, we're going to give you information. There wasn't really any connection. Yeah. It was like, I just come and sit. Um, and again, that was the times, and that was just where sure. people were. A- another thing, and you guys know I harp on this all the time, uh, one, of, one of the most interesting classes I took at, at Mid-America Baptist Theological Seminary in my MDiv was with Dr. Steve Wilkes. Now, Steve Wilkes used to be a member at Broadway back in the 90s. And um, remember when we did the DISC training? Steve Wilkes, God rest his soul, would have been labeled in disc a whirlwind. I mean, he (laughs) was a whirlwind. All right. And anybody who knew Steve Wilkes knew that about him. But he was incredibly gifted and smart. And the Lord used him very mightily with me. Um, He had gone to Fuller Seminary and got a doctorate. And then he came, I think, to Mid-America and got another doctorate. But his specialty was in Sunday school and consultation of church growth. And so one of the courses I took with him was on Sunday school, and he asked this question, and I never forgot it. He said, you just have to know Dr. Wilkes. I mean, he this this is the guy that would get arrested by the KGB on a mission trip. True story uh, for, for singing his guitar out in front of um, a, an apartment complex in Ube- Uzbekistan. Okay, so th- this that really happened. This guy was just a whirlwind. All right, but... But what he what he asked in the class, he said, and I mean that in a good way, um, what he asked in the class was, what is the purpose of Sunday school? And, you know, of course, everybody gives their opinion and no one agrees on what the purpose of Sunday school is. So the the average comments and I bet if we asked our church members this, that we would get the same thing. Most people said fellowship. Some people said discipleship. Some people said teaching, right? So is it is it information? Is it discipleship? Is it fellowship? What is it? What is Sunday school? And Wilkes pointed out that the original intention of Sunday school, based on Arthur Flake's principles, um, when Sunday school was invented in England, the purpose was evangelism. It wasn't discipleship. It wasn't community. It was evangelism. And so Flake's formula, which is the the old adage of Sunday school, if you ever study what, what was Sunday school, how did it come about, Flake's formula was all about getting people into Christ through the means of Sunday school. So today, when you look at Sunday school, like nobody thinks it's evangelistic. Nobody. Like who says in a church Yeah, the purpose of our Sunday school is to get people enrolled into the class so that we can get them into the back door of the church to get them saved. I mean, now, I'm sure they would say, oh, sure, I'd be willing to do that. But but that's not the way anybody is thinking. Now, Wilkes' point was that we've gotten so far off base of what the purpose of Sunday school was even designed to do. Now, it doesn't mean we throw it out. But again, I think if we asked people, what is the purpose of Sunday school? I think you'd get a myriad of answers And no one in the church would agree on what the purpose was. So why am I saying that? Because I think some people are going to say, well, aren't we already discipling in Sunday school? It depends. I mean, it depends on what class you go to. If you go to a a heavy teaching class, nothing wrong with that. I don't I don't I wouldn't label that discipleship. I would label that teaching teaching the word. And that's a good thing. But 
are you like being held accountable? Do people know your name? Are they calling you outside of class? Are they are they praying with you? Are they walking through life with you? That's discipleship. Right. But I think that in, in Southern Baptist churches in the 80s and 90s, people thought, well, discipleship is Sunday school. And no, I mean, not really. Um, not technically, according to the reasoning and the terminology. So why would we do A to F? Because we do want to note that Sunday school has a place. And we want to note that training unions and those kind of things have a place. But we have to clarify where that place is. Now, let me just say a word on clarification. Why would we need to be clear? Clear. And why would we need this process to be clear? Let me ask you guys that question. What do you think? Why do we need to be clear with our process? In our culture, people are bombarded. We all are with information overload. I mean, this is the information age and the internet age. So we have all of this information that is just flooding us. And we have all of these processes, uh, quote unquote, that do all sorts of things. And we we search WebMD for all of the things because we, we don't think we need doctors anymore because we can figure it out online. Wait, we we still the, need them? I mean, I don't know. Okay. But, you know, you can go to the Internet and you can find anything, uh, any solution for any problem, maybe. Um, but all of this information is just overloading everyone, and there really is no clarity on any of it. I mean, depending on where you're getting your source of information, I mean, you could be walking, you know, into, it's a trap, you know, that whole thing. I don't know. Maybe that. What is flat. that from? Stock bar. No, I'm just kidding. He's I knew kidding. that. <laughs> so anyway. Return of the Jedi. <laughs> Some of our Ackbar, listeners might not know. Who is yeah, Ole thanks, Miss's Brady. official mascot. Yes. <laughs> Did you know that Ole Miss, okay, this is just crazy. You know, I went to Ole Miss and um, they, they went through this identity crisis for several reasons. And, like, I still don't know what they are. I still don't know. But at one point, they said they were going to adopt Admiral Akbar <laughs> as their mascot. And I was all for this. I thought, this is a great idea. Well, I don't think that passed. <laughs> and then they were going to be the bears. And I, I don't know what happened to the bears. And pass. then they were going to be the sharks. Land sharks. And I don't know what happened. And I, and I went to a game recently, and I saw a shark. But they keep now they keep saying they're the rebels and i'm like okay so what are what are you like i don't know i don't know where they are on that spectrum but the old miss shark bear rebel akbars technically i think they are the land sharks technically that's true technically i think okay. on paper they're all the right. land sharks. okay great well anyway all that to say we're getting um, flooded with information and so we you in know, this getting culture flooded with information everything's yes, changing everything that we just said which is totally wrong but <laughs> The world is being flooded with information, and so if anybody is going to be clear, it has to be the church. It has to be—we have to be clear about what we believe and what we think according to Scripture. So really, it's not even what we think, um, but what the Bible says about how we grow in Christ, how we are made mature in Christ through the enablement of the Holy Spirit, through His guidance. And so I feel like we have to provide clarity to a culture— who has no idea what truth really is. Well I, said. I think part of that clarity, too, is giving people like an end goal, like what does fruitfulness look like? And so putting that on a piece of paper as pastors and saying, hey, this is what the Bible says, or if you've never been discipled, if you're not equipped to do anything, you're not serving, you're not giving, right, then you're not really all that Christ wants you to be. And so I think bringing clarity, giving someone, giving them people an endpoint to shoot for, like, okay, that's what is expected of me. This is what the pastors, you know, according to God's word, have said. This is what's best for you. This is what Christ wants you to become by His grace, by the Holy Spirit, and by the means of grace, by going through these processes, you can become this by God's grace. And so, if we just kind of say, oh yeah, if you join, that's all we expect. Well, you're missing out on being discipled and discipling others, on being equipped and equipping and serving other people, on bearing fruit and seeing people you've discipled disciple other people. And really, you're missing out on all kinds of things that God has for you if you don't have clarity on what the end goal is. Yeah. And I would say this as well. Studies have shown that churches grow that, A, are biblical. They're very clear on their biblical stance their biblical beliefs, but also, in addition to clarity on their biblical truth and stance, they're clear in their preaching, and they're also clear in 
their vision? Where are they going? What are they doing? Because when a guest comes in to your church, mentally they're asking thousands of questions. You know, some of those questions in their head are never voiced, but they're asking, are my kids going to be safe here? Are my kids going to like it here? Do you have something organized for the family? Uh, will we fit in here? Uh, if, if I come here, where are you going as a church? And what are you about to do? And, and what do you expect of us? And they want all those unasked questions answered, I believe. So you guys know, I mean, one of my major goals is to be as clear as possible on every level. And I, I believe this A to F is one of those items of clarity for anybody who walks in the door or anybody who's sitting in the pew and you want to know what are you guys doing and what is the vision and where are you going? You don't have to wonder. We've told it to everybody and we want them to tell it to you. We want it to be so common that people go A to F, right? It's like a tagline. How do you, how do you know what's going on here at the church? A to F. What, what does a true disciple look like? A to F. You know, what, how do I get involved at Broadway? A to F. And so it's just this comprehensive process. And we feel why? Because it, it's clarity on being healthy. It's clarity on being a disciple. It's clarity for people that are coming into the church. And clarity is always good. It's always good. It just helps people understand the mission and they either get behind it or they don't, you know, and they see you're going somewhere or you're not. And so I think it's going to benefit us in a million ways. So one of my favorite examples of clarity that, that, that just helped me tremendously, I love watching documentaries, and I love watching political documentaries. And so I was watching this documentary, and I've told you guys this story a hundred times, but I was watching this political documentary years ago, Right around the Bush Kerry 2004 election, this documentary was made and produced. And I cannot find this documentary any longer for the life of me. It used to be on Netflix, it's not there anymore. Basically, it was about this guy in St. Louis who was a nobody. And he asked the question in the film Can a nobody become like a somebody politically? you know, a senator of a state or whatever. And so this guy kind of takes the premise of Mr. Smith goes to Washington, you know, the old Jimmy uh, Stewart movie. And he basically just says, I'm going to hit the streets and I don't have anybody funding me. And I'm just going to see if I got a shot. Well, the whole documentary, it basically shows that, no, you don't have a shot if you're a nobody. But the whole time they're looking at him and his story there's a side story going on in this documentary of the bush Kerry campaign of 04. And they're showing how Bush and Kerry are campaigning at that very same moment that this nobody guy is campaigning. And one of the, the most striking moments is when the documentary makes the point that the clearest person is the one that wins, not the one with the most facts and figures, you know, 70,000 Americans don't have health insurance and 25% of all Americans are without blah, blah, blah. People get lost in all that. And they say they want that, but they don't. And so they get lost in all that. So this documentary says, look, one of the reasons we think Bush won again in 04 is because his campaign had the clearest, simplest message. And, and at first when I heard that, I thought, oh, that's not true. He had the better platform. He had the better blah, blah, blah. He was an incumbent. But no, they prove it. And they said, now just watch. And so they go around to all these people everywhere. I mean, people at their house, they're knocking on doors. People at the local bar, they're asking them, who did you vote for and why? And so it's election night, and you're watching the returns come in behind these people that they're interviewing. And Bush is winning, you know, and Kerry hasn't conceded yet. And they're like, who did you vote for? And what, what they found is all the Bush people were saying the same thing. They were saying, well, you know, President Bush, I mean, it's safety, it's security, and it's stability. 
Well, then they show Bush on the campaign trail, and he says, I want you to vote for me because it's a vote for safety, security, and stability. Then they show ads that were broadcast on TV, and it's like, vote for President George W. Bush. Safety, security, and stability. This ad was endorsed by George W. Bush. You know, and, and they're, they're, they're showing all these ads, and it's like everywhere the Bush campaign went, they said these three things over and over and over. So they go to this bar of a bunch of 22-year-olds, three-year-olds, whatever they were, you know, in St. Louis. And they go out to these kids at the bar, you know, who voted for the first time. And they say, who did you vote for? And, you know, one of them say, I voted for John Kerry. Why? Well, I don't know. I mean, I just think he's the better candidate. You know, his dad owned ketchup. You know, he was in Vietnam. <laughs> and then they're like, OK, who did you vote for? George Bush. Why? Well, you know, just safety, our nation, security, stability. And I was amazed these people repeated whether they knew it or not. They repeated the message. And it was like, oh, my gosh. What a genius job you guys did. You stuck with three talking points and you got your message across and people believed it. Now, what did I take away from that documentary? I took away the best thing is always to be extremely clear and just keep repeating that. That is the best thing. And and so if you notice, we, we do that a lot. We repeat, we say A to F is one of those whys. Why are we doing this? Because we want to make... The process of being fruitful in Christ as clear as possible, and we want people to be able to say it when somebody new visits the church. We want them to just know instantly. Why do you go to this church? Man, because they have a great process, A to F. You know, how do I become a, a member at Broadway? A to F. You know, anything, that's it's just a great answer. And I would um, also add that, you know, clarity uh, also um, gets people excited about it. So it's not just, you know, being clear, but it's something that they can wrap around. I know personally, you know, internally, as we've been talking through this process, it's kind of caused me to be excited about this, uh, just because there is such clarity. And so I think clarity in, you know, how you can be an effective church member, um, and, and more than that, how do you become a faithful, uh, effective disciple for the kingdom of God? I think that should excite people, and I think it will. Uh, as we roll this process out. Yeah. So hopefully the why is we think we're going to communicate and be clear and help you, the member. All right, let's go to how or, or when. Is that is when, that, when, when and how? how yeah. Okay, when, we're going to combine when, them, and, when how. and how. So when and how are we going to do this? Um, when first. So Brandon, what, what should the church expect to see in the next uh, couple of months as we move into the new year? Yeah, so uh, coming up in the new year, um, we've actually pastorally been thinking through, you know, who we are as a church, kind of our identity or our focus, I would say, is the word that we've used, um, which we'll we'll talk more specifically about that at the first of the new year. Um, but, you know, when we implement that focus, uh, starting probably not the first Sunday of the year, because it's actually January 1, which is going to be New Year's. Uh, which is great. You know, we pray that everybody comes, but we're going to say probably January 8th is when we're actually going to roll out this whole and, process. And that day, by the way, is Elvis's birthday. Yeah. So what <laughs> are really, you going to do? That's the real reason. What are you going to do for Elvis's birthday? Yeah. I just want to know. Uh, I, <laughs> Teddy bear. Folks, folks, <laughs> what I want you to encourage Brandon to do is dress up as Elvis. No. On January the eighth, and lead us in um, in one of Elvis's gospel no. songs that he won a Grammy for. The only time Elvis yeah. ever won a Grammy was for gospel, and it was for "How Great Thou Art." Yeah. And he touched me. I actually so knew that. I think you should. I think you should do. Well, that. considering that you are actually the one that won Entertainer of the Year for 1992. Elvis impersonation. Yeah, I bet impersonation. you didn't know that, did you? They you know, they tell me. I tell them that all the time. I won at yeah. Graceland. I won Entertainer of the Year in 1992. Yes, it's true. So, you church, ask Brady. Pastor Mark <laughs> to do this. Brady. So, anyway, back to uh, the point at hand. Uh, January the eighth, uh, we uh -huh. are. <laughs> Praying I'm to sorry, roll, out, <laughs> roll out this whole thing uh, with talking about our our focus as a church, um, who we are as a church, um, and then this process of how we're implementing that focus, and then all this you know also incorporating that into the vision of our church, uh, which is uh, the nine marks of a healthy church. 
uh, which we actually have in the office hallways uh, framed if you ever want to um, learn more about the nine marks or nine marks.org, or you can look in our book nook. We have plenty of that too. Um, but this process, we, we feel like pastorally really fits well into that. And, uh, like you said, providing clarity and that'll be, uh, really the theme for the year of 2023 starting in January. Yeah. So we've talked about, you know, some churches will do like a word for the year or a theme for the year. We've never done that yet, but we thought about this year in 2023, making our word equip and our, you know, our theme, Ephesians chapter two, 11 and 12, which if you go back to the first sermon that I preached here in view of a call, it was Ephesians chapter two, 11 and 12 which was equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. So from the very beginning, that was that was the the battle cry. If you vote me in here at this church, this is what we're going to do. This is where we're headed. And, um, you know, they, they probably say, can we re-vote now? No. <laughs> can, can we have another election? But um, the, it was Ephesians uh Four. I said two. Yeah, you said two. See, but it's four. See, I don't it's know. four. It's that Ephesians dementia. Four. It's that dementia yeah. I'm getting. Uh, yes, Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. Yeah. I should know that. Ephesians 4. And so the very first sermon was equipping the saints. So we thought about kind of rolling out A to F. A to F is going to be, you know, this process that's always there. Right. But for 2023, equip. We want to equip the saints for mm-hmm. the work of the ministry. Yeah, and, and actually... Uh, since you just dropped that too, I mean that'll actually be the focus. Uh, will be. Will you have coffee cups qu- that say <laughs> equip? <laughs> coffee cups. Qu- coffee cups. Coffee cups. Ca- 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 coffee cups. <laughs> coffee. Know, we'll coffee talk. It. Coffee talk. Oh, we'll get with our media director. We have coffee. We talk. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. But no, it's it, it really is great when you think about uh, who we are as a church. Our focus being every member equipped. We want every single member equipped. Uh, in our church, because again, pastorally, that's why we're here um, to to shepherd the people, to equip them for the work of the ministry. Um, how do we do that? A to F. And then yeah. where are we going? Nine marks. Yeah. So. The reason I say the coffee cups is because I went to First Baptist Church Atlanta in April, and as a, as a guest, they gave me a guest bag, and they had in the guest bag these cups that said disciple. And So I bring the cup back to our staff and I'm showing everybody what I got as a visitor at Big First Baptist Atlanta. I mean, this is Charles Stanley's church, you know, that he that he used to pastor still attends. And so I'm showing them all this stuff. And I said, yeah, I got this coffee cup. And I said, I don't really understand why it says disciple on it. First Baptist Atlanta. But I think that's their theme. And so we looked it up because we were so confused and it was their yearly theme But, like, they didn't do anything other than just have a word and a theme. Like, there was no sermon series on discipleship. There was no clarity on, now, why did we pick this theme? Brandon said it almost looks like they just picked a word and put it on a coffee cup. (laughs) So um, that's what we're doing, too. We're just picking a word, and we're just going to put it on a coffee cup. No, we're not. But um, you might see the word equip, and that's going to be a good 2023 word, all centered on A to F. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So real quick on the on the on the when and the how kind of thing. So let's just go through how would A to F look practically? Like you you told us Brady what A to F was. A was attending, B was beginning at Broadway, C was covenant community, D was discipleship, E was equipping and F was being fruitful. But how is that going to look on a day-to-day basis as we move everything toward that? So let's talk about that for a minute, because I think that's key. People say, yeah, this is a great idea, but how are you going to do that? Practically, what is this going to look like? Well, first of all, A is just going to be attenders. Right. So if you're one of those people that you've been attending and you've never joined, you're in that classification of A. That's where you are on the spectrum. You are here. Okay, so just so you know and we know, that's, that's how we're viewing you. Now, our goal is to get you to move. We don't want you to stay at A forever. If you're going to be with us, we want to move you to B, which is beginning at Broadway, and we want to try to urge you, go to the class. So, you know, we already do that, but we have this great membership class, and we have a podcast on it, and we want to move you to to the letter B. 
Okay, let's say they go to the membership class and they say, yep, I like this church and I think I'm going to go to C. I'm going to commit and I want to be a member. I want to covenant with this church. Okay, what does that look like? Well, you join the church, right? That's step one of the C is you become a covenant member. But then also we want to get you in covenant community groups, and that is Sunday school. Yeah. So we're not defining Sunday school evangelistically. Right. And we're not even really defining Sunday school, and I say we, the pastors, as necessarily, um, you know, discipleship, though it has elements of that. What we are doing is we are saying Sunday school is really your community group. Yeah, I think uh, primarily because they connect. Um, they connect the body uh, to each other, um, and they give opportunities for the church to show hospitality to one another, the members of the body. And, and that's, you know, really that's my heart for uh, Sunday school is that, you know, those families would meet outside of the classroom, that they would show hospitality, open their homes to those uh, families, and then, honestly, you know, that kind of leads to some levels of discipleship groups uh, in the next stage. But we want to connect the church together. Yeah, and it's natural also for, you know, people who are visiting the church and want to, you know, attend a, a, a Sunday school class. It's natural to invite them. It's kind of a, a natural entry point into the church to, to join the community, to get to know people. Whereas discipleship and equipping, that's kind of more further down the road. You don't just jump into a, a church and are, are equipped to do biblical counseling. That's kind of a further on the process. But Sunday school being more about connecting, it's a natural, no pressure place to connect and get to know other people in the church. And let me say this real quick. Uh, we have excellent teachers. Uh, we have a lot of really good teachers in Sunday school, and that that is good. So there is definitely a strong teaching element to Sunday school, but I would say the focus uh, for these groups, and you can actually see that when you get into uh, to a lot of these classes, is that you know we are trying to connect the body together. Well, and wouldn't you say the strongest classes are the ones that are in community together yeah sure i mean some of our 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 biggest classes that are growing are the ones where people feel like i'm very well known here we we do things together outside of church this is my community kind of group and and what we'd really like as the church gets larger there needs to be a group where you kind of fit and belong in the old days i think that was the care groups um, you know, but, but we feel like we've kind of passed out of that phase for various reasons. And, you know, we, we won't go into that. They're not bad. They're not all bad reasons. We just kind of feel like we needed to move beyond that to be more inclusive of people coming into the church. And so we thought, well, look, Sunday school is really that just easy community. You come, you, you're going to be here anyway. You get to know these people. You see them every week. And there, there's just a building of community. And like, for example, your Sunday school class that you're in, Brandon and, and Brady, you guys do a lot of things outside of Sunday school. Yeah. Like, for example, um, over the uh, last holiday that just happened, the devil's holiday. No, I'm just kidding. I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, you Dia guys. <clears throat> yeah. Dia, Dia de los Muertos. Uh, I learned that at Ole Miss. Uh -huh. <laughs> Mississippi's number one university for Hispanic speaking people. And land sharks. Ole Miss. So anyway, I learned that at Ole Miss, and um, <laughs> the the whole thing there, uh, you guys like got a trailer, and you put hay on it, and you put kids in the back, and you went around the neighborhood. Why are you laughing? No, we did. It was You great. went around the neighborhood, you ate little Debbie. We and, did. There was a, a man in our neighborhood, apparently, who does little Debbie stuff, and he just like tracked us down and handed us a bunch of boxes of little Debbie. It was great, though. But all of the families. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, well, he only gave enough for one or for each family. Um, but no, it was great. It was a great time with uh, with our class um, because again, it wasn't a class setting. It was our home, and we were able to share a meal together, and uh, and really talk and have great fellowship and and build those relationships. And so we're seeing classes like that yeah. really thrive and really grow. Why? because there's this connection and people feel like there's a community. So we really want to urge the classes to do more of that. And I really hope more will 
say, you know what, we're going to do a fellowship outside of class. We're going to all get together and go out to eat, or we're going to all get together and go to a game or whatever. And so yeah. you would feel like you belong to your class and there's something distinct other than, you know, a second sermon, because sometimes Sunday school can feel like you go to a little sermon and then you go to another sermon and then you come on Wednesday night and you go to a Bible study and it's like, how much of this do I need? Well, you really need community and that's what Sunday school can kind of fill out. So Sunday school will be C. So membership in Sunday school, D, discipleship. That's different. That's where you're in a smaller group setting, preferably men with men and women with women to keep it, you know, good and and wholesome. And those are people that are holding you accountable, praying for you specifically, and you're talking about deeper things. So for example, right now, um, all of us are discipling different men in the church. So Brady, you have a discipleship group on Tuesday nights at eight o'clock with several young 20 year old men and you guys are reading through or you were reading through a book on like some theologian Mm -hmm. and then brandon you have a group that meets at starbucks in olive branch at like two in the morning or some ungodly time (laughs) and uh at 5 30 in the morning and you and those what how many five guys yeah five guys that are meeting together you're talking about the Bible, you're centered on Scripture, but they're also asking questions to you about their personal life, about living, and you and Justin Smith are trying to help those men as they walk yeah. in the Lord. Me, every Tuesday at 4 o'clock at Beans and Leaves, I've got a group of five guys that that pretty much were all pretty new to the faith, and, and some of them had recently been saved. And I just got convicted. I really need to try to disciple them through the basics of the Christian life. And so we meet together and we've been going through First John and what does it mean to be a Christian? What we're seeing, though, in these groups where we've been discipling these people on a small level is they're now saying, OK, I want to start discipling some of these new young men that are coming into the church. So in my discipleship group, I've got two guys in that group that are like, can we start another group and start reaching this list of guys that we've made that are not going to any discipleship? And I'm, I'm like, well, sure, I'll help you. That's great. So I'm, I'm coming alongside them. I'm helping them. And so what we're seeing is men are discipling men. They're meeting together. And this, this flows right in line with what we're doing on Sunday nights. We kind of have it formally set Sunday night. Men are praying together. They're coming up here to pray. They're, they're meeting in smaller groups and being discipled. And we've got that going on on Sunday nights. Now, the women, very much the same thing. Women are meeting through our women's ministry all throughout the community. And they're meeting in homes. Sometimes they meet up at the church, but sometimes they meet in homes. And so, for example, your wives are going to Tony Manley's house every Tuesday at 6 o'clock. And it's like, how many women go? We don't know because we don't go. But it's like, you know, a ton of young ladies. Yeah. Y'all have any clue? Like, isn't it like 20? It's like 20. Something like that. They, they cook is what I've heard. Mm-hmm. Uh, they talk about the gospel. They talk about what it means to be a wife, a woman of God. I mean, Tony's like discipling all these women and they love it. They're all meeting in this home and they're coming together. And so that's what we mean by discipleship that really Sunday school isn't designed to do. And I'm not knocking Sunday school. We want to keep it. It's just not designed for that because you're, you're in a, a space at the church early in the morning. It's a limited amount of time. You got to go to the next thing, you know, but this is like in homes, coffee shops, uh, whatever the case may be, where people are getting together and they are, you know, they're, they're hearing the word sometimes it's up here at the church but they're getting together and they're they're holding one another accountable in a small group so that's discipleship right that's d letter e how is that going to look well letter e is equipping and we really haven't done a great job of that yet but we want to start moving wednesday nights to equipping night so let's talk about that for a minute what would it look like um, next year at some point. And, and we want you to know we're not rushing to this all at once, but we've got to finish Revelation. We're doing Revelation right now on Wednesday nights, and we're going to finish that through the month of May. Right. But after Revelation ends in May, we're looking at 
the rest of the year. What are we going to do on Wednesday nights? So let's talk about that for a minute. We're going to equip. So what's that going to look like? Yeah, we've talked about having different tracks you could do. Um, so maybe more you know practical kind of skill base where we're actually teaching and equipping the church to do something. Um, so it could be look like you know biblical counseling. There's a great need in the church for not just the pastors, but for members to know how to handle problems biblically and how do you address sin issues and how do you go to the scriptures to solve life's problems. And so equipping members in biblical counseling, what does that look like? What is biblical counseling? How do you do it? Um, what skills do you need to develop? It could look like evangelism classes. You know, how do we share our faith? What are some different approaches or methods or way to do that? It could look like how to lead family worship in your home. Um, it could look like just all kinds of various things. And we'd have maybe three options, you know, for a semester or for a year. And you, you know, pick one for, a, you know, for a semester and go to that, be equipped in that skill. Uh, and then maybe the next semester you pick a different one and you learn how to do biblical counseling. And so every year we'd rotate, maybe add different classes, but just trying to equip the, the body and doing things, not just another Bible study, not just a sermon, but really practical, like for the evangelism, you know, maybe you, for part of the evangelism, we actually leave the church and go do evangelism, you know, for part of the, the session. So, yeah, just a different take on Wednesday nights, be more equipping based, less, uh, you know, repeat, repeating other things, but we're really not doing equipping in that way. Uh, and so this would be a dedicated time to do equipping would be Wednesday nights. Yeah, so the idea would be maybe next year when you come on Wednesday night, we still have the meal, you eat together, but at 530, you have a choice of two to three or four classes that you would go to. So if you want to learn how to evangelize, you go to evangelism. If you want to, learn, like you said, biblical counseling, if you want to even learn how to disciple people. We've talked about having a class on discipleship and how do you do that and so it's going to very much be a how-to uh, process on Wednesdays so you know it, people have said we enjoy your Bible study and that's good we want to keep we want you to continue to enjoy it but we want to use that time to move you to faithfulness and fruitfulness in your walk with the Lord so you know there's so many things we could do and we've talked to people about you know, I've, I've got a group of people that said, I want to learn biblical counseling. Yeah. Okay, well, when are we going to teach you that? I mean, when are we going to do that? And, and Wednesday night would just kind of be perfect for equipping night. I would also add uh, actually two things. The first thing, I would say we've actually kind of done a little bit of this already over the summer when Brady, uh, Pastor Brady went through his parenting uh, class um, over the summer last year. And I think we're trying to do something like that this coming year over this summer where we do maybe one track where it's, you know, something specific that, you know, the whole church can come to and be equipped to do something certain. Um, but then in the fall, start out with those uh, those tracks. But the second thing I would add uh, would be there are also other ways that we are looking pastorally to equip the church, and that's through various seminars. These could be like one-time events or weekenders or things like that where we're trying to equip the church. For instance, we just did one on parenting in the digital age, how to uh, you know equip parents to actually minister their children and get them through the digital age. Um, uh, and that uh, went really well, and we feel like pastorally that would fit directly under E. And then we're doing a parenting class or a seminar, excuse me, uh, with Champ Thornton in uh, at the new year. So um, there will be those opportunities of those little one-off seminars that will be geared towards equipping the body to do something. Yeah, so it's super exciting. We we have you know thoughts designed around. How do we do that? And then finally, F is fruitfulness. And so that's not really something we can plan or or do. We just want to see our members sharing their spiritual gifts and being fruitful and sharing their talents. And so that may mean that new ministries are started. It may mean that old ministries are strengthened. I mean, it, uh, who knows what it's going to mean. But the membership being discipled and equipped hopefully will be faithful and we're hoping that you can turn around and do that in somebody else's life. So this is kind of a circular process, A to F. And so once you become fruitful, you, you turn around and you start looking for people who are coming into the church. And I'm seeing that with these guys I'm discipling. They are hungry to look for new people to say, hey, what about this guy? He just came and joined. I don't think he's in a group. What about this guy? They're not coming on Sunday night. Can we reach out to him? on and on and on and so it's really neat to see that 
and uh, really need to see what, what God is doing. So we hope to roll that out in the new year, and we hope that it's very clear and that it helps our people move to the next level. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. Yeah, I'm excited. Well, I appreciate all of your work on it. I know that Timothy and Brandon are working on logos and designs, and I know that the staff has prayed through this and thought about it, and we've labored. I know that we've had a ton of meetings with different people to say, you know, what do you think about this? How do we? How can we help you? And so this is not just something that, that we've just, again, flippantly done. This, right. is, this is a process, but we want to— move our people so a to f where are you on the spectrum well we're excited to share it together and all of us grow to faithfulness well on that note we will end our podcast right or did you want to say something else brandon no, no? it looks like you were going to say something fruitfulness uh, you wanted to say you wanted <laughs> to say happy birthday elvis that's what you wanted to say <laughs> on january the 8th so this episode obviously is sponsored by elvis presley enterprises yeah. Be sure to visit Graceland on your day off and spend all your money. Tickets are only like a hundred bucks, and so go over there and <laughs> you'll enjoy that. Also by Ole Miss, yeah. the best Hispanic university. The land sharks. This side of the Mississippi. And, and the all Bush their and many Kerry administration. And, and the George <laughs> W. Bush and John Kerry administration. Political administration. Campaign Political campaign. Thank you to all of you and to sponsoring this episode and to all of our wonderful listeners who listen and keep us going and let us know we appreciate you all right good deal we're out